Hello and welcome to Lehigh Valley Sports Scene on this Tuesday evening. I'm Gwen Begley, joined here by Tom Mike Krantz. We'll get you ready on the show today for the two big Thanksgiving Day showdowns. But first, we're going to see what the Muhlenberg football team is up to as they named a new head football coach after the passing of Mike Donnelly and then fill in of Corey Goff. Obviously, a huge addition to this Iron Pigs roster is the activation of Zach Eflin off the disabled list. Well, Alex Lyon, our expected number one goaltender here in the Lehigh Valley, got the start for the Flyers last night, making 31 saves in their five to win preseason win over Boston. We'll be sure to see him at some point this weekend. Well, recently we got a taste of some hockey at the PPL Center as the Philadelphia Flyers took on the New York Islanders here in Allentown. Well, now it's finally the Phantoms turn as they began training camp this week. Tonight they get a taste of the newly realigned division as the Charlotte Checkers come to town for two preseason tilts. Christy Fulkerson and Doug Heater have more on tonight's matchup from the PPL Center. Now now putting himself at the top of the scoring race for not only the team with 15 points throughout 12 games, but for all rookies in the ECHL. Newly promoted Scott Kingery made a heck of a catch in the second inning that even cracked the Sports Center top 10 for today. Central Illinois, I'm sending you my bill for anxiety pills because I was <laughs> stressing last night. I felt like they were one of my kids. It was very stressful. All right, anyways, Allentown Central Catholic continues their reign in the East Penn Conference, having only given up five sets in their 10 game undefeated season. The Vikings now take on Emmaus, who has only one loss to Liberty on their record and a little something in common with Central. Both of these teams beat Parkland. So how would they match up against each other? Well, this match wasn't for the faint of heart, I'll tell you that. The drama will come later. But for now, the Vikings look to have this first set under control, coming out to a 14-8 lead. Ava Grapsy with the kill. Don't count those Hornets out just yet. They slowly come within range 19 to 16. Adelina Rivera Woolard power in the kill central keeping the edge small edge but an edge nonetheless it takes set 125 to 20. The Rail Riders announced their projected 25 man opening day roster on Tuesday and there's an apparent youth movement going through this Yankees organization leading the way are top prospects such as Clint Frazier, Dustin Fowler and of course your opening day starter Jordan Montgomery. The fight and Phils now have two players with 30 home runs or more for the first time in their 50 year history. That of course comes with a huge night from Dylan Cousins who knocked three out of the park here at first Energy Stadium for his 30th career home run. Thank you guys. Yes, the accolades keep coming in for the fight and fills this morning. The Phillies announced the Paul Owens Award recipients. That goes to the top minor league position player and pitcher of the year. Not only is this the only camp offered for rowers in the Lehigh Valley, at the very end of the three days, the campers get a very special treat, getting to participate in the Philly Youth Regatta. They actually get to race on the Schuylkill River at Boathouse Row. It was operating for 120 years, and it just closed down in 1995, November 18th. So oh, the it city didn't. Down in yeah. Wow. Bethlehem Steel FC went back to school to learn some history about the city they now call home. Is it correct that uh, a lot of these workers were immigrant workers who came? over to work for the steel. Boluwak and Yoda, James Chambers, Josh Hurd, and Samir Bader got a taste of downtown Bethlehem's biggest attraction. All of the men in the community pretty much worked, worked at the steel mill or they were overseas at war. Oh, yeah. Formed in 1904, the Bethlehem Steel Corporation served as the economic lifeline of the community, producing the steel that built our nation's most impressive structures. So the steel from the Golden Gate Bridge was actually made here. And if you see the orange color over there, they use the same color, so that's the same color as the Golden Gate Bridge as well. They would make probably 2,600 to 3,000 tons of iron per day. So, yeah, there's a lot of history in Bethlehem, and obviously and the entire history of, of your team is based. We are here because here. of this thing right here, exactly. right? <laughs> Was soccer the only sport played here by the steelworkers? No, the steelworkers, they had a baseball team as well. So they played baseball, played soccer, they played a bunch of sports to kind of pass the time when they weren't here, which pretty much their entire life they were here. After 120 years in operation, Bethlehem Steel saw its last day. And rather than demolish the historic mill, the community rallied together to bring it new life. They could have just tore it down, but instead uh, Arts West came in and made it into kind of this music and arts center for Bethlehem. So they hold World Cup watch parties. There's a movie theater inside. So they really turned it into more of a tourist attraction. I watched uh, the Men's World Cup, U.S. Germany, and then I watched the women's final here actually. It was awesome. 
but I didn't get to learn as much about the history as I am today. They also learn the history of their own team, more specifically their logo. Centered around Henry Gray's Bethlehem Beam, which revolutionized the age of skyscrapers and accounted for the mill's success. Strong like James right here, right? <laughs> Boy, this people's kid sure can run. The senior dodges the Spartans' biggest guy, number 77 there, Chris Bleich, who's a UCLA commit, and he just takes off from there. 49 yards for a 28 to nothing Archbishop Wood lead. The onslaught continues as Wood goes up 41 to nothing. Wyoming Valley West, they do escape the shutout. Dwyer out of the pocket and 22 yards into the end zone. The final for Northern Lehigh High School, Archbishop Wood 41, Wyoming Valley West 14. Well, if you're going to go down, it might as well be from the defending state champions in Archbishop Wood. Now, even though the numbers on the scoreboard weren't exactly pretty, they never quit today. And that's exactly the story of this Wyoming Valley West team season, starting out one and five and then going farther than they ever have before.